Hello, this is an example of magnetic induction and induced EMF. Really what we'll be looking at is an induced current, but in general this is really an example of Faraday's law and an induced EMF. This is very similar to what Faraday did to figure this out. So what we're looking at here is a galvanometer. Again, this is just a ammeter basically. It will deflect if we get currents. We have then one, two, three different coils connected to that galvanometer. And so if we establish any potential difference across these coils, we will allow current to be established inside of this and the galvanometer will measure that current. So what I've got inside of one of these coils is our favorite cow magnet. That is a, a cow magnet. And right now, this little coil definitely is experiencing magnetic flux. Remember, magnetic flux is any time magnetic field lines exist in or throughout an area of coil or of wire. So this wire here, they make uh, circular coils. As you can see, these are round circular coils. And this small one clearly has a magnet in it, meaning it has magnetic field lines going through it. So there's a magnetic flux. Now the thing to remember always about Faraday's law is that it doesn't matter if we have magnetic flux, it matters if we have a changing magnetic flux. Well, how could I change the magnetic flux in this area of wire? Well, one way I could do that is I could take this magnet and I could remove it from the area of wire. And when I did that, you saw as the magnet was removed from the coil, our galvanometer read some current. And so I'll show you again, if I insert the magnet into that coil, I'm, oops, missed. If I insert it, I'm getting a change in magnetic flux as I insert the magnet. And we can see that as I insert or pull away the magnet, clearly the needle deflects, and that means we're getting a changing magnetic flux in the area of the coil. Now, the only difference between this coil and this coil is that this one has about twice as many turns and this one has about twice as many turns as that. And so as we go down our coils, this one should have uh, twice the turns, this should have four times the turns as our first coil. If I take my magnetic field lines and change them through the area of the second coil, we see we induce a current in here. If I remove those field lines, we would get a changing magnetic flux in this area, which would induce a current, and we can see that here. Do you notice that as I insert the field lines or as I remove the field lines, we're getting an opposite direction of current. So one of them must be creating clockwise current around here and one must be creating counterclockwise current around here. What do you think will happen if I insert the magnet into the larger coil? Should the magnitude go up or down for a deflected needle? It looks like it goes up. So this is an excellent example of mag changing magnetic flux in the area of a coil inducing a current in that coil. And depending on if we increase the field lines in the coil or decrease the field lines in the coil, we can see that we get uh, a somewhat equal but opposite reaction from our galvanometer. So what Faraday discovered and what we utilize all the time is that if we have a changing magnetic flux in the area of a coil, we induce a voltage, an induced EMF in that coil, which can then establish a current as long as we have a closed loop for the current to exist. 